God bless you guys. This is Sean here from Faith Brings Change. I just want to come on here and uh, I want to share a big uh, dream the Lord shared with me, you know, uh, you know, about regarding the uh, tribulation. Um, first of all, I want to say there's been some great brothers and sisters that, uh, you know, servant of God. Uh, I commend you if, if you're on here, if you happen to see this, you know, you've been doing a great job. I, I love your sweetness that you've been bringing to the body and and you, you know, talked about mercy, and you were very humble, and, and praying for people, and telling people, you know, the body of Christ to wake up. That was very good, and about repentance, and, and that was so awesome. And, and, and serving of Elohim the same way, you know, you've done that, and uh, warning people, and I love your, 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 uh, you know, the fire that is just, you, you stay still in one place where the Lord wants you to be, and just speaking to the people, you know, what they need to hear. I love that. There was, guys, there was a brother on here. I, I, if you notice, I've been speaking about bitterness a few different things, guys. This is this is a huge dream, but uh, even though it's something, you know, it's a kind of a short vision, but it's very big details, guys. Uh, you know, basically, uh, see if I can remember. Uh, basically, I was, I was in a dream, guys, and I... Uh, in the dream, I was getting paid. It's like it was my birthday. It didn't make sense why it was my birthday, but for some reason, it was my birthday in the dream. And my sister Alicia invited a whole bunch of girls over. And we were in a den I used to be in, you know, a den. And, uh, you know, oftentimes the Lord will take me in that den when he wants to reference uh, Daniel and the den of lions and reference tribulation. And he's, he's given me dreams of that before. And so that's the only den I've ever lived in. We actually turned it into a, a room and I used to live in there. But uh, anyways, it's like we had a party thrown. And in normal life, my brother, he's he's an atheist. He doesn't believe in God. But in normal life, it's like we he'd be all happy throwing us a party. And so I'm thinking, oh, we, we're all enjoying it themselves. And I was joking in the dream um, because, you know, I was I was joking. For some reason, I was joking about the four beasts of the book of Revelation because we don't talk about this stuff in real life. But I was just sometimes uh, I, would, I was just joking and I mentioned a clown and I, I was I was laughing. I was like, well, I guess a clown doesn't te uh, it's technically not a beast. And I was just, you know, laughing, making a joke, a Bible joke, because between me and God, he showed me about it, the clown, the spirit of hatred. He is a beast, but it was just funny. And it turned out to be Yeshua in the dream, pretending to be my brother, but I didn't know that at the point. And, and when I, when I joked about the clown, he's like, okay, Sean, almost like, uh, getting, uh, annoyed. And, and Yeshua will play this because he'll play roles in the dreams. Angels will play roles because they want to give you something. And I noticed, like, that's weird. He almost acted, like, jealous or, or something was weird in him. And it was, I kept getting paid this money and I couldn't even count it. And it's like he was jealous for some reason of that. And I was, I was thinking, didn't he give the money to me? Or didn't he help me get it or something? I mean, it was like birthday money. But I just kept getting this money. I couldn't stop counting it. And I know there are a lot of people that, that sometimes have these dreams of money. And they they have this money problem. And, and there's this prosperity gospel thing. It was nothing like that. This this represented spiritual blessings. I, I promise you. I, I'm content. I don't need any of that stuff. But I just kept counting this stuff. And and it was like he was he was jealous and I I was wondering you know what's wrong and then I saw him watching a movie. And the movie the guy said something to the woman and he just backhanded her and the woman she was loosely dressed she had like uh you see where men wear briefs you know, uh, like briefs like tight underwear or whatever like blackish color or whatever she it's like she was wearing that and she had a sleeveless tank top and she was with this guy. And he was kind of overweight, and he just had a dark look about him. It almost looked like one of those 70s movies they used to watch where, like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where he had those women or whatever. And this guy just backhanded her to the floor, and she ran. And in and, and dreams, guys, I don't feel this, like, in real life, but when God gives me this, he gives you downloads. You just know. I just knew if I didn't get out of that house, my brother would murder me. And he's, he's not like this in real life. I mean, he doesn't believe in God, but I just knew he would literally murder me if I didn't get out of that house. He, he was going to kill me. 
And I sensed it was in December, and it was three and a half years after the time that Revelation 9 happened. I'd been pouring out the plagues because I shared with you, some of you, you know, I've shared with all of you that G Yeshua told me I was Elijah to my face, you know. He's got to tell somebody. He's got to give somebody this job of being Elijah at some point, you know. I'm not reincarnated version of him or anything like that. There was Elijah. There was John the Baptist, the second one. I'm, I'm the third one. But he, uh, I just sensed that I needed to get out of that house right then or he would murder me. And he let me know what this represented. That this brother represented the brothers in Christ. That there are people out there who want to kill us, guys. That, that they, they're they angry toward us right now. Because I'm, I'm going to mention, I won't mention the brother's name, but but this was about him. I didn't, I, I Yeshua told me to forgive him and I forgave him. And I let it go, but I wasn't going to just make videos. Like, he just kept making a bunch of videos about me getting angry because I told him about bitterness and stuff, and he took it personally. And he kept just making a bunch of videos slanderous. But I stayed quiet, and Yeshua talked about it. Yeshua was exposing some sins that he needed to repent of and, and everybody else, but he said this was a spirit of murder that the, what people were watching on those TVs, guys, that technology... They're emulating what they're watching, like horror movies and different stuff, making people vengeful and watching the Batman. And so the Batman is a superhero you see takes out vengeance on people, just takes out vengeance. And, and the guy just backhanded. The woman represented the body of Christ and, and it... Sometimes these revelations can be deep, guys, so I have to be very uh, careful and very how, how I get them, guys. Those women in the dream represented the members of the body of Christ, and he was angry. And, and that money I was getting paid, it did represent souls. Because he gave me another dream, and I'll explain that. It represented souls. And, and that man and, and that he was watching in the video, uh, or, you know, the, the movie, represented those leaders. And they... They're backhanding, treating the body of Christ like she's a whore. I mean, he said the body of Christ had went away into whoredom. I mean, Yeshua literally met me face to face and told me this. He said, but those men who are so harsh at them, he said they made them the body of Christ a whore. So he said it's on them. So they don't basically have any right to judge them. But and don't get me wrong. You have uh, people in, in a good place that are telling people to repent. And telling people to go and sin no more and not commit adultery. But they're doing it in love. They don't have bitterness in their hearts. This one guy would just be... Even the ones that are his own people that are keeping the commandments. Even the people that are keeping the commandments. Just just going off and saying, you know... you know, uh, People making up their own interpretations and having their own dreams. And just being angry in general because of a person's having dreams of the Lord. Or just being angry because God is using somebody in the same gift. And it's no, it's generalizations is the problem, Yeshua said. It's like they're shooting, uh, shooting a gun, shooting a gun, and not saying who it's directed to. to. Like, for instance, uh, people need to stop committing adultery. That's direct. That's direct. I mean, you're, you're hitting home. And as long as you do it in love... Okay, you know, as long as you do it in love. But it's like they're saying people are bad. I, I'm giving you an example. People are bad. They're not being direct with what they're saying. They're just shooting guns all over the place. And it's injuring the body of Christ. And Yeshua talked to me about it is why I'm so sure. And he wasn't happy about it. And and he talked to me about it. And, and he mentioned in the next dream, he'd already told me, I, I told you guys... Basically, uh, what I want to say first, and I'll, I'll share the next dream, is that you're going to have to get out of Dodge when it's time to leave after the tribulation. Because they're literally going to, uh, those seeds of hatred they're watching on those movies, and they're also, it represents imagination of the mind. They're imagining evil against their neighbor. If they don't repent of that hatred in them, when Yeshua, when the 102... Um, 1,260 days up, the preaching of the two witnesses, the devil's going to enter into brothers and sisters in Christ who are, who are given over to hatred, and they're not circumcised in their heart, and they're still living in their own sins. He said that's partly a big reason why they're doing that. They're angry at their brothers. He said if they don't do that, the, the spirit of murder is going to enter in their heart, and if you're found there, 
and your houses, you'll be murdered. He said, you're going to have to get out like Sodom and Gomorrah. And he, I already told you about that before, guys. When this three and a half year thing is over, you're going to have to leave your houses. You're going to have to leave. You can't tell anybody. You can't even tell me you got to leave because the Antichrist and, and world government or whoever, armies or whatever, they're going to be coming to kill us after we did those miracles. They're going to be angry. We put those plagues on them. Um, us that were doing it and, and we weren't doing it. We wouldn't be able to do it if we had bitterness in our heart. We'd be in the same judgments. But And so that's why you're going to be able to tell the difference. Who's really loving of the Lord and who's not. But we were just trying to save people. They're going to be, they're going to hate us so much, guys. He said, your own brothers are the ones, you know, it talks about in scripture that a man's uh, foes shall be the men of his household, brother against brother, uh, sister against, you know, uh, mother-in-law against uh, daughter-in-law. A man's foes will be um, the men of his own household. Children will rise up against their parents. I mean, they're going to cause us to be put to death. Some of them are going to kill us, guys. And so this is serious. The next dream I had after that, Yeshua was with me and he was just talking to me and I was asking him questions about uh, the book of Daniel and he was answering some things and then he walked off. It kind of surprised me and he mentioned Candyman. I was like, what? Candyman? Candyman? And, and the angel started to laugh, you know, because he did it in a kind of a funny way. But he gave me, I wrote down in that dream past, I don't know how much money I had. I just kept counting it and it was making my brother jealous, but... In this dream, he took 50 from one angel, and he took 20 from the other. And it's like a 52 pickup. He, he gives me, he, he's been giving me that number 52 a lot. Now, and I'll explain it. It's in this Bible. And he mentioned Candyman. Candyman's a demon from the east, the, the demon of adultery he showed me in another dream. He already told me. It, it was against the tribe of Judah, against the other two, and... Uh, Reuben, the firstborn, uh, Reuben meaning a son, behold, and the third one was uh, a Gad, meaning a troop, to basically overcome the world, you know, through our faith, we're like a troop, and a God, that's on the east. The adultery demon is in the east, you know. He mentioned candy, man, and I thought it was interesting that he actually looked like uh, the guy from Case from Christ, if you ever seen that guy, uh, the movie Case for Christ or whatever, the Lee Strobo or whatever his name is, he had those uh, 70s style sunglasses and he looks all kind of retro. He looked like that and he was pretending to be mad. He wasn't really mad. And he just took a step, stop toward the left and uh, toward an angel and they started laughing and I started laughing. And he was just showing how ugly that people think that because they're angry, that equates to holiness. And it's almost like he was saying, can you imagine me being all angry and, and like this, you know, and showing me. And I was thinking that looks ugly. And he was talking to me normal. But then all of a sudden, he, he, he when he walked away, he got the 50 and the 20. He almost looked like the Lee Strobo from the 70s, almost like a drug dealer. I mean, it was like it was like a, I got the dough. I got the dough. And and. Doe also representing the word of God, the bread of life. I, I mean, so he, he does multiple revelations he gives you, you know. He's, he could be funny, but if you have the depth to understand him and get him, he speaks a lot of stuff in one thing. And he's got, like, I got the dough. But he was acting like, he was acting prideful like the, these people were acting. And he's saying how it's basically, he doesn't like it, but he did it in a joking way. And he mentioned Candyman. And I also add, um, I'll just go ahead and I'll read this. 52 pick up, just think of Candyman, the adultery committed in the east. It says, moreover, the spirit lifted me up and brought me unto the east gate of the Lord's house, Ezekiel chapter 11, which looketh eastward. Behold, at the door of the gate, five and 20 men. Remember, I told you he had 50 and he had 20. And it, these five, it represents five and 20 men he's given me in my hand to judge. He's saying, look, Sean, they're saying, because this guy, uh, I just told him not to be bitter and have mercy toward other people. And he was saying, like, I had my own authority in FOSS. And I, I let him totally slander me for the past couple of days, making all these videos. And, and then God, you know, basically re rebuked this in his own way right here. And he's saying, basically, I've given... Uh, the men into your hand like this because you judge with mercy, you know. I've, I've given them into your hand. And he, he called me by the name of Elijah. It says Elijah's supposed to judge. And it says, 
And so that money he was paying with me was represented souls, 50 and 20. Candyman, I told you he's on the East Gate, so you're going to find adultery in, in here. And it says, um, And behold, at the door of the gate, five and twenty men among, among whom I saw Jen, uh, let me see if I can pronounce this out. Maybe I'll butcher it. Jezaniah, the son of Azer, and Pelatiah, the son of Benai, princes of the people. Then said he unto me, Son of man, these are the men that devise mischief and give wicked counsel in this city, which say it is not near. The time is not near, in other words, for the end. Let us build houses. This city is the cauldron, and we be the flesh. Therefore prophesy against them. Prophesy, O son of man. And the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said unto me, Speak, thus saith the Lord. Thus have ye said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. Ye have multiplied your slain in the city. They slain the people with their words. They're so bitter for no reason. You have multiplied your slain in this city, and you have filled the streets thereof with the slain. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, and that Candyman demon just slaying people. You remember what he represents? I told you. They're also trying to have a racial war, and it just represents he's angry. He can't forgive. That Candyman spirit is bitter. He's just going out along slain, and they're trying to represent one race against the other people, and it just represents brother against brother. That's part of what Candyman represents, brother against brother. In this case, it represents, and you got people in the house of God that are just mowing people down for no reason. Not for committing adultery, not for doing lust, but they're attacking a brother because a brother doesn't believe the rapture is pre-trib or post-trib. They're attacking somebody because somebody, you know, whether it's pork or whatever, or meat, when the New Testament talks about this kind of stuff, that he said, if they just stay away from idolatry and, 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 uh, yeah, idolatry and, and uh, adultery and, and eating things strangled with blood. He told the Gentiles, then they'll do well. He didn't impose any other burden on them. They just keep themselves from those sins. But but they they lay all these burdens. They're they're saying you you were bad, you were bad, you were bad, and and you're and and, and like this guy was saying in his dream, he asked Jesus, why are all these. And he saw basically Jesus as Iron Man in the dream. And yes, Jesus does appear as this, but it was also a rebuke. Because uh, Jesus is the Iron Man, but it's also they're trusting in this technology I told you. It's teaching them. That demon Iron Man is a demon of pride, guys. He's puffed up. Yeshua was saying it, and when he asked him, how come the man asked him, how come people are still sinning and it's so hard? And, and Jesus told him, when you get up here, I'll explain everything. And he's not saying when you get to heaven. He's saying when you come out of your sins and you get humble, humble yourself. Stop judging my people, in other words, like this. And and you first take care of you. Then I'll explain everything. But And, and that Iron Man demon, because he already talked to me about it. That technology they're watching through the TV, it's teaching them to be hard and harsh toward people. To rule with the iron fist. To slam somebody down. And see, you notice there, there are people that have come on here and say, I fell into this sin. And I say, I'll pray for you. You can do it. You can get up. You can, can be that man walking in holiness. I'll encourage them. But they have not encouraged the sheep up. They beat them and they say, you stay down. You stay down. These men are having their own dreams and their own visions. And it's just like, there's no love. You see what I'm saying? And so Yeshua is saying, when anybody points the finger and he has not cleaned himself, then God will send a prophet to judge that person. Or I, I should say, m maybe not judge, but rebuke him or correct him. And, and so I came in love and I wasn't like harsh at him. But anyways, I'll, I'll continue in verse 6. You have multiplied your slain in this city. You have filled the streets there with the slain. Just like that candy man, just hooking people. Angry brother against brother. Therefore, thus says the Lord God. You're slain whom you've slain in the midst of it. They are the flesh, and this city is the cauldron. But I will bring you forth out of the midst of it. Ye have feared the sword, and I will bring a sword upon you, saith the Lord God. And I'll bring you out of the midst thereof, and deliver you into the hands of strangers, and will execute judgments among you. 
He said if these people don't repent, he told me in the dream, he's going to give them over to the Antichrist and the false prophet. He'll leave them here. He won't rapture them. If they're smiting with the fist of wickedness, they're smiting their brothers and sisters. They're not having mercy when they're in those same sins. He said they're in th these people he mentioned uh, in particular is still in adultery. And he's, he's, he's uh, smiting with the fist other people in the body of Christ. He hasn't cleaned himself of his own sin. And I will bring you out of the midst of it thereof and deliver you into the hands of strangers and will execute judgments among you. Ye shall fall by the sword. I will judge you in the border of Israel and ye shall know that I am the Lord. This city shall not be your cauldron, neither shall ye be the flesh in the midst thereof. But I will judge you in the border of Israel. Ye shall know that I am the Lord. For you have not walked in my statutes, neither executed my judgments, but have done after the manner of the heathen that are around about you. And it came to pass when I prophesied that Pelatiah, son of Benaniah, died. Then fell I down on my face and cried with a loud voice and said, Ah, oh, Lord God, will thou make a full end of the remnant of Israel? And I just want to stop there and I want to say, guys, he said that he asked God, um, well, I got I to gotta respect this. God bless you, brother. But there are people that say, that tell me in the dreams, they say, God, why are these people still sinning? I don't even have the courage to talk to the Lord about that. And he called me Elijah. I don't have, so I don't know if I believe that. But, um, you know, I ask him, you know, I have asked him, why do they slay the ones that love them and are just trying to tell them to repent? Why do they fight them if they're not even yelling at them, if they're being so nice to them? Why do they fight them? I've talked to him like that. I haven't said, why are all these people sinning? I mean, just show mercy. The Bible says, you know, uh, judge not and you won't be judged. And, and yes, I get we're supposed to judge. Like there's someone like a uh, servant of Elohim and, and servant of God. And some of you out there, you've got wonderful channels. You know how to uh, do the judgments of the Lord and be merciful to people. And that's what I'm saying. God wouldn't be judging the people harshly, except they, they're showing great harshness. They're not showing mercy to the people, but Yeshua is telling me behind closed doors, they're doing the sin of adultery and they're smiting my people backhand and they're like a woman. He said they're accusing the, the bride of Christ as being like a whore and she's gone into great whoredoms, but he said there the men have made her a whore. Those members, they smote her. They haven't lifted the sheep up. They haven't encouraged them saying, you can do it. You can be holy. You can, you can walk in the ways of the Lord. They've stamped them down. And and I have great mercy for that, brother. And brother, if you're out there, I love you. I'm not condemning you, you know. Just show mercy to the poor. Break off your sins. Show mercy. You know, uh, you know, they basically said he has his own authority and he's just judging by himself. Where well, Yeshua told me that 52, he put a 50 in my hand, a 20 in my hand. He mentioned the candy men. He mentioned the East Gate. And, and you got five and 20 men that are doing wickedness. And as he gave them under... Uh, in Ezekiel's day into his hand, he's given me into their hand to judge them accordingly because they've slain his people with the sword of their tongue. They've slain them. They have not helped the wounded. They've just drove the knife in deeper. They haven't respected that many of the people are children in the faith. They're learning holiness. They need to say, you can do it. You, you can be holy. You can walk in the ways of the Lord. You can beat it. You're stronger than the devil. They need that kind of encouragement. They don't need the kind of encouragement I curse you, curse you, you know, if you, if you don't do this and, and that and, and, and behind closed doors, the same guys that are telling them that or, or doing those sins in the dark, those same sins, adultery. And that's why Yeshua doesn't like it. And, and he, uh, he pretended to be mad and it was kind of funny. He just had that, he had that, uh, those sunglasses and like, uh, Lee Strober from my case for Christ. And he just stepped his feet toward the left and like the angels kind of laughed, you know. But he said, you know, he came back to me. He said, this is this is how they're acting. They think this is me. They think this is what I'm like. He said, what do you think about this? And I said, this doesn't look like you, Jesus. And he said, I know it doesn't look like me. This is the way they're portraying me to the body. And in, in verse 17, uh, or verse 14, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through and I'm going to read uh, something else to you. It says, Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, thy brethren, even thy brethren, the men of thy kindred, and all the house of Israel, holy, are they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get ye far from the Lord unto us in this land given in possession. Therefore say, 
Thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet I will be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered. They've scattered you far away. And I will give you the land of Israel, the overcomer, overcomer of sin. I'll choose the weak things, he's, he's saying. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof, all the abominations thereof from thence. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and will give them an heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. But as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their ways upon their head, saith the Lord. That candy man spirit of adultery is in the east. You know, he's doing violence. He's smiting with the fist, teaching people to smite with the fist and commit adultery. That's what they're doing to the body of Christ. They're saying she's a whore, but they backhand her. They make her a whore. And, and, and it's not everybody in the body of Christ. It's not, it's not everybody, you know, like I said. But this judgment's a coming upon them that if a judgment without mercy shall be shown to them who have not had mercy. But mercy triumphs over judgment. Verse 22, then did the cherubs lift up their wings and the wills beside them and the glory of the God of Israel was over them above and the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city and stood upon the mountain which is on the east side of the city where adultery is committed also. Afterward, the spirit took me up and brought me in a vision by the spirit of God into Chaldea to them of the captivity. That's the people of Babylon and spiritual speaking also. So the vision that I had seen went up from me then I spake unto them of the captivity all the things that the Lord had showed me. And I want to say the adultery, guys, adultery is on the left hand, the east. This is my, this is east, the left hand, the left hand path. Because on the right hand, they should be with the body of Christ. They should be, those men should, should uh, train up the body of Christ as a woman. They should, they're, they should be a head ruling over her, loving her. And, and saying, you can do it. You can walk in the holiness of the Lord. Telling the members of the body, you can do it. And be over here. Because this, this right side is where Christ is and his body is. But now they've gone over the left side to another God. Committed spiritual adultery also with them. The candy man spirit, which is the devil. You know, in another form, it's the devil. But... I want to, I want to mention, because Yeshua testified to me this, and so I believe his testimony, what he said of me, he said, I'm giving you these men, they say you can't judge. He said, I'm giving you these five and 20 men into your hand, and he put 50 and 20 dollars in me. He mentioned East Side, mentioned Candyman, because he knows he gave me the dream of adultery, and so he knew the next day I'd be reading this, and I didn't think to come across it. He just put it in my lap, and I was like, whoa. That's the east side. That's where the candy men is. And these five and 20 men, that's why you gave me 50 and $20. Those numbers, by the way, add up to 70. Like the 70 years of captivity Israel went into for uh, doing violence to the land of God. And they do violence to the body of Christ, which is made out of land. It's like uh, made out of the members of the body of Christ made out of dust. You know, they're made out of land. They are the land that they are oppressing, God says. And, and I'll read this last chapter to you because this is uh, very telling. Uh, I told you, they're smiting with their, their mouth. They're smiting with their tongue. They're not healing the body of Christ. They're not in love teaching them to go and sin no more. They're in hatred they're preaching. Ezekiel 22. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Now, thou son of man, will thou not judge Will thou judge the bloody city? They're bloody with their mouth, they slay. Yea, thou shalt show her all her abominations. Then say they, thus say the Lord God, the city sheddeth blood in the midst of it, that her time may come, and maketh idols against herself to defile herself. Thou art become guilty in thy blood that thou hast shed, and hast defiled thyself in thy idols which thou hast made. And thou hast caused thy days to draw near, and art come even unto thy years. Therefore have I made thee a reproach unto the heathen, and a mocking to all countries. 
Those that be near and those that be far from thee shall mock thee, which are infamous and much vexed. Behold, the princes of Israel, every one were in thee to their power to shed blood. They're shedding blood with the sword of the tongue, guys. It's, it's, it's a, you know, they're, they're not having mercy on, on people. They're just flinging these prophets. They're all bad. Or these people, they're all bad. Um, uh, like basically saying, you know, uh, let me give you 14 reasons why, how a prophet is false. 14 reasons how a prophet is false. And it's all to tear down. Nothing, nothing to build up the body, just to slam it down. Let me give you 22 reasons why not to trust this person? I I'm giving you, they're shedding blood, guys. They're not having, you see what I'm saying? You see the difference between that and just telling people you need to go and sin no more because the Lord's judgments, you know, they're near at hand. They're to be poured out. You know, I haven't like raised my voice. And if you guys have came on here asking prayer, you don't ever have to worry about coming on here. If you're struggling with sin, ask, I'll pray for you, you know, but the God is, God is judging these things, these 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 people who have done this. He's if they don't repent, they're going to fall under God's judgment, and He's given them a briefing now, so they don't have to be judged later. It, it says if we judge ourselves now, we won't have to be judged later. In verse seven, in the next page of that twenty uh, second chapter, two two seven. I just thought about that. That's my number, guys. If you don't know, you you'll understand that number in time to come. It's it's related to this judgment. I'll just say Revelation nine. That's all I'll say. But in thee have they set light by father and mother. In the midst of thee have they dealt by oppression with a stranger. In thee have they vexed the fatherless and the widow. You know, in, in the house of God, they've, they've, thou hast despised my holy things and has profaned my Sabbaths, my times of rest. It represents Yeshua accomplished, uh, you know, the work on the cross. If people would believe and have faith in it and, and put their, have place all their faith in the word and just forsake the world and, and trust in him. They can do all things through him who strengthens them um, and, and rest in the Lord, not go back to the works of uh, sin, like the works of adultery or things, rest in them. It said they've despised my holy things and have profaned my Sabbath. And they are men that carry tells the shed blood, that tells about others, just gossiping about others, no love. And in thee they eat up the mountains. In the midst of thee, they commit lewdness. In thee, they have discovered their father's nakedness. They don't cover up the nakedness of their fathers. They, you know, pull out the garment, as uh, one prophet Amos said. You know, there are men versed from war. They just rip off the garment, you know. In um, thee, they have discovered their father's nakedness. In thee, they have humbled her that was set apart for pollution. And one has committed a abomination with his neighbor's wife there you go adultery from the east and another has lewdly defiled his daughter-in-law and these are the men that are judging the house telling them to stop and they're they're doing these things and another in thee has humbled his sister his father's daughter in thee have they taken gifts to shed blood they have taken usury and increase and thou was greedily gained of thy neighbors by extortion and has forgotten me saith the lord god behold therefore i have smitten my hand at thy dishonest gain which thou hast made, and at thy blood, which has been in the midst of thee. Can thy heart endure, or can thy hands be strong in the days that I shall deal with thee? I, the Lord, have spoken it, and will do it. And I will scatter thee among the heathen, and dispense, disperse thee in the countries, and will consume thy filthiness out of thee. If they don't repent, they'll be cast into great tribulation, guys. They'll be left behind when they're saying they want to get raptured and, and they're going to be left if they keep doing this, smiting with the fist, as Yeshua said, not showing mercy, not coming out of their own sins and yet trying to tell the other people, you know, to repent and they're not coming out of their own. And thou shalt take thy inheritance in thyself in the sight of the heathen. Thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. All they are, are brass and tin and iron and lead in the midst of the furnace. They are even dross of silver. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye are all become dross. Behold, therefore, I will gather you in the midst of Jerusalem. 
as they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin in the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it to melt it. So will I gather you in my anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath, and ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall you be melted in the midst thereof. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, that I the Lord have poured out my fury upon you. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed nor rained upon in the day of indignation. There is conspiracy of our prophets. This is what I'm talking about, guys, in the midst thereof. Like a roaring lion raving, ravening the prey, they have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. And, and, and one guy, uh, like I said this, uh, I've forgiven him, but Yeshua told me to speak on this because I wasn't going to make a video until he told me, but he was looking at me face to face talking with me. The the first post this man posted, uh, one of the, one of the posts first he said you know he said I had an unclean spear he said I had Lucifer in him because I told him he needed to get rid of bitterness, and and just go a little easy on the flux. Still speak. It's okay to tell them not to commit adultery. Just just stop smiting with the fist, you know. And he said I had the spirit of Lucifer, and I told him you can be forgiven if you speak a word against the Son of Man, but if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you never have forgiveness. And I said, but I'll pray for you. I'm, I'm trusting, you know, God will have mercy on you. And he, he was still harsh, you know. Said I was proud. And, and, he, and he wrote, the, the sinner, uh, all sinners are equal. This is what he wrote, all sinners are equal. And I made a video, guys, to you yesterday talking about how Yeshua in the end of the age, I wasn't saying it angry. He told me face to face he's going to separate the sheep from the goats. And of all sinners are equal why does god make a distinction between the sheep and the goats why did he call job perfect why did he call noah a man who had once uh instance had been guilty of drunkenness and, and uh, nakedness and yet another sense he called him uh perfect you know he walked with them in his generations noah was perfect the reason why he uh called him that is because not in his sin but he was walking with the lord and when he fell yeshua would have rebuked him but uh, he was walking with them. He, God makes a distinction. He, he doesn't write to the sinners in Galatians or they write to the saints. There's a difference. And not everybody, it's okay to have a past. You know, we all have bad past, but God calls us to go sin no more and, and we can do all things. And, 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 but, but men are trying to mix it up. They're trying to make everybody the same because they're feeling God is convicting them, not condemning, but he's convicting people to get repent. And sometimes people get convicted more to the degree they're judging people, God will convict them more. Because to the degree you judge others, you will be judged. And, you know, that's part of why. And and it says, uh, let me see. See if I can find this. See if I can find this. Hold on one second. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Sorry about that, guys. It says, There is a conspiracy of our prophets in the midst of thee. Like a roaring lion ravening the prey, they have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure, precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Her priests have violated my law. I went through that already. They violated my lie and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. That's what I was saying, guys. Neither have they shown difference between the unclean and the unclean. That's what I spoke about yesterday. His title of his video was All Sinners Are Equal. You see what I'm saying? They try to mix it to, to justify staying in sin. But yet, when I sinned in my past, I told God downright, I served the devil. I was erased from your book of life. I humbled myself. And, and I know those of you out here there have humbled yourself when you've repented. Uh, and, and God commends that and he lifts you up and he says, go and sin no more. You can do that. But to the men that, that say, I have not done this. I, In other words, when they sin, they say, my name's not erased from the book of life. You know, I have not done this. They They pretend, they make their sin light. They just say, everybody's a sinner. They make it light while smiting with the fist. But there are other people that... Uh, 
don't make sin light, but at the same time, they know how to show mercy. Which one do you think God's going to be pleased with? Person that shows mercy. Person makes distinction, like this Bible says, between the unclean and the unclean. Doesn't smite with the fist because there's holiness of not committing adultery. There's also holiness of loving your neighbor as yourself. These are equal things people got to learn. And people try to equate in the body of Christ too much anger and animosity is being somehow is as, as if it's a virtue of the Holy Spirit. And it's not. I told you guys, God gave me that dream of that pumpkin head ripping that bitter person's back up. They were getting ripped up of that demon and it hatched out of them. And in hell, they torment the people that are bitter, can't forgive like that. There's unforgiveness in the body. There's not love toward one another. And, uh, yeah, he says, They have put no difference between the holy and profane, neither have they showed the difference between the unclean and the unclean, and have hid their eyes from my Sabbath, my time of rest. They say there's no time of rest. Let's just smite each other. We're not going to go easy on one another. We're just going to smite each other. Like I came to him not yelling at him. And he's still t telling the devil to get out of me. He's telling the Holy Spirit, calling the Holy Spirit a devil. And I am profaned among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood. And to destroy souls to get dishonest gain. And their prophets have dubbed, dubbed them with untempered mortar. Seen vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord has not spoken. The people of the land have used oppression and have exercised robbery. They, they rob people of their faith. They, and it says, They have vexed the poor and needy. Yea, they have vexed, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it. But I found none. Therefore I have. I, Poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, say the Lord God. And one of the chapters I read about, it says, You have made the righteous sad, whom I'm, I'm not made sad. In other words, the poor my people who were walking in repentance. You just attacked them for, for no reason. They were walking in holiness. They were willing to do... Uh, there, there are people that are willing to... To walk in the ways of God. And they're just smiting with their fist. And, and doing general like I told you. Do, making videos generally. That's saying 15 reasons why a prophet is false. And, and, and stirring up strife. And, and shedding innocent blood. And, and gossiping. Making videos about different Republican par or Democrats I should say. And saying those people are fools. And these people are going to get exposed. God, guys this is violence. This is murder of the heart. This is a... We need to get this out of the body of Christ because Yeshua said he's not pleased with it. He, he, in a light way, made fun of it and said, basically, Sean, you know, what do you think about this? You know, and I said, that doesn't look like you. And he said, you're right. You know, this does, this isn't me at all. This is what, this is who they think I am. They think I will not judge because I've been quiet. You know, he's the meek lamb. They forget he is the meek lamb, but he, when he keeps seeing a person continuously smite with the fist others, he's going to eventually confront it. And, and he's called me to love this person. He says, I love this person also, Sean, and pray for them. And so love the person and, for, and don't resent them when they're doing this. They don't know what they're doing. But he is telling me that the brothers that have not gotten this hate out of their heart at that time, they're going to be activated. Those evil imaginations against their neighbor, they're going to be activated. They're going to literally kill you if you stay you're gonna have to leave your house guys it talks about not putting confidence in a brother and i'm sorry i wish it, we could we could have it not have it this way um i want everybody to be saved and i still have mercy on everybody and let them all come and let them be saved but there's gonna come a point in time when we're gonna have to leave and we're not gonna be able to inform people and we're gonna have to be very careful guys very careful who we trust because it can be life or death is what yeshua told me you know, if they do these things when the tree is green, he just brought that scripture to mind. I haven't thought about that in a year or whatever. If they do these things when the tree is green, what will they do if I make it dry? You know, so if they're doing these things when the land is good, what happens if God is taking four hours of the day? What happens if Revelation 9, people are cast into outer darkness? Will they come out of that and want to slay the people that weren't in that darkness? You know, he's telling me they, they will. And so you got to be very careful. You got to be, make sure guys, 
You're armed with love for the people. Your love for the people. Your your mercy on them. Your uh, forgiveness. And, you know, and bearing with them, bearing with people. And if people need prayer and they're confessing their sins to you, you don't slam them down and say, we'll pray together. You can overcome this. You can do this. You can walk in the ways of the Lord. You can walk in the holy, holiness. Nothing's too hard, you know, for the Lord. And, and encourage them toward the Lord, you know. Because pretty soon, and, and he told me, I'm, I'm going to be judging. He's going to, uh, you know, there are things said about me in the cults. He didn't just tell me I'm Elijah in the dream. There's also signs, you know. There's signs in my name. It means, behold, it's here. You can uh, type the numbers of my name, uh, 227. You'll find all the numbers associated with my name, 227. Sean Matthew Beavers adds up to that. It says, you know, he will be a twin. I'm a twin. Uh, uh, Alicia... My sister in the dream, you know, her name's, well, her name's a derivative of Elisha and representing the body of Christ, representing my wisdom and my wisdom in the dream. She brought a bunch of women over. It represented the bodies for the, the members of Christ. And in that dream, that brother was angry because I had all those bodies. I was getting paid that money, which represented souls. God was giving souls to me because I wasn't doing it for myself. I was doing it just so they could be saved, you know. I didn't want them to be smit. I, I tried to rescue sheep from other men's hands or who were smiting them. I said, just go, go a little bit easy. That's all I asked them to do. That's all I asked them to do. I, didn't, I said, I enjoy your videos. I love your videos. Just go a little easy. Just watch where you're aiming, you know, your spiritual gun because you're just shooting people. And, and they got so angry. But that was what Yeshua, you know, when he came to me in the dream, he said he was proud of me for doing that, basically, you know. And that's what he likes to see, mercy and, and helping people, guys. And, and, and people just want to judge just to slam people down, and they've missed the point of judgment. That's not the reason why judgment is given. The judgment and the rod is given to bring people toward Christ, not to cast them away from him. It's to get them, uh, you got to know how. You can't just have a rod. There are some of these kids, that guy in particular, has not been saved very long. I don't think it's even been a year. And there are a lot of people who want to get an iron rod right now, but sometimes you gotta you gotta go through a wilderness first. You gotta learn to be humble. You gotta learn how to use the rod and not to, so God can trust you with that. He says, "Much is given, much will, will be required." You know, and you really have to. I, I see when I, I I I'm sensitive that God is watching me. He's watching how I'm treating you guys. I can't smite you. I gotta I gotta strike. I gotta speak to the rock. I can't strike it. You know. I got to be very careful, you know, and I'm always trying to assess myself and, and, and we're supposed to be humble. And I'm not saying, you know, I, I, I need to work on, you know, sometimes in comments and everything, I need to work on that. But there are people out there that are just smiting people and saying they don't have anything to work on, you know, they don't have to, they, they, they got it, you know, and they're just slamming people. But Yeshua said behind the curtain, he told me they're committing adultery. And I think he's, referring to this brother and I'll, I'll pray for him i will i'll pray for him i understand those sins can be deep to get out of i can understand you might feel angry about that brother but there's no reason to smite the rest of the sheep you know if you need prayer come to us you know we'll pray for you in secret you know truth for bearer uh 1414 at yahoo.com you know you can you can send me an email lowercase truth for bearer lowercase uh, and, and I'll pray for you. You don't have to be smiting everybody. Just show love. Show love, brother. They need they need to be lifted toward God. Talk to them. Go ahead. Keep Continue. Preach them uh, to come away from adultery. Come away from idolatry. Not to look at porn. Not to do any of the masturbation. Not to do any of those sins. Not to drink alcohol. Go ahead and do all that. But just watch what spirit you're doing it out of. Watch if there's that anger, that hatred in your heart. You can't have that there, brother. Because that, that'll separate you from God. But I love you, brothers and sisters. I love you, everybody in the Lord. Uh, I'm praying for you all. I didn't intend for that video to be so long. It's almost nine right now. I'm going to let you go, guys. Uh, I pray this message touched you. It blessed you. If, if, if it blessed you in any way, if you want to leave a comment, you can. Or maybe I need to do something better, work on it. You can go ahead and leave me a comment. <coughs> if there's any passages, you know, scripture you want to hear. But I love you guys. Uh, there's, there's great things to come to the body of Christ. We just, you know, we got to go through that little period of that Revelation 9 thing first. And God's going to sort this thing out, you know, in one day. And so 
just show mercy to each other and pray for one another and be careful when you're speaking go ahead and tell people to repent and, and stop doing those sins tell them every day they they need to know that so they can be ready but just watch how you're doing it but i love you guys i'm gonna let you go until next time shalom